What's up guys and welcome back. Today's a very special day. I, uh, I've received, okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. I paid $1,300 for a puzzle. Some may call me crazy, some may call me stupid. You're both probably right. But uh, that being said, this is an insane puzzle. It is super rare. It is one of 130 puzzles only, a limited edition puzzle known as the SMS box puzzle. I will read to you the little letter that came with me. How is it possible to receive an SMS with this old telephone? That is the goal of this puzzle. To do this, you will need to open more than one compartment in the SMS box. When you can read the SMS, you'll know that you've solved the puzzle and found all the compartments. All locks, and there are a lot of them in the puzzle, are manipulated and solved with tools provided. Even though there are lots of magnets, springs, you don't need to hit anything or use any external force. There are many tools provided to solve the many stages along the way, and there's a tool for everything. No external items are required or allowed, so no raiding the office or the kitchen drawers. <laughs> Noted. The puzzle has some deliberate booby traps. Great. Even when you think you're on the right track, you may have been going up a proverbial garden path. If you're into mapping puzzles, another puzzling element will be to understand the booby traps themselves. A, to stay away from them, and B, to work out how to get back out of them. When the first prototype was finished, Brian and Juno looked at several aspects of the puzzle and decided they were ridiculously hard, so they went to great lengths to make the solutions to different steps more straightforward and consequently more elegant. So this SMS box is made from Queensland black bean, and the dial is made from Queensland silver ash in Australia. Um, Brian Young is one of the creators of this puzzle. This probably being one of the hardest um, puzzles on the planet. <laughs> Daunting, scary. Uh, I can't wait to try and solve it. Let's get into it. This is the SMS puzzle. Oh my God. Uh, I'm very intimidated at this point um, just because of what this says. <laughs> the booby traps and everything else. So. I hope I don't get caught in those. All right, first of all, I noticed that this thing uh, comes out. There's a magnet in this little rod. Don't know what that does. Just scanning to see if there are any other magnets here. Other than that, this turns. It also, if I push in here, as you can see, the side pops out. I don't know what that does, but it doesn't do it over here. It just does it literally over here, round by the six. It gets stuck here, here, and here. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Those are like the three spots. There's a button here. This one is not raised, but you can push it in a little bit. That's really, that's really it. I thought they'd give me a little bit more something to work with. Oh, seems to be a magnet here. Oh. No, I might be messing it up. Maybe I'm in a booby trap already. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna press this. I'm gonna try to turn. There's something weird here. Look at that. Something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Right here. There's like a little, little clicking thing here. Can I open this? No. Okay. So no force. No force, Chris. No force. <laughs> oh wait. Did you hear that? Oh, hello little bead. There's a little bead. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, it's one of those. So I'm not sure if I broke it or <laughs> if there's just a bead running around there. I think it's a little bearing. It's in there dropping somewhere. Well, I have no idea what's going on. Maybe I have to use this to catch the bead somehow. You know what I mean? Now, I just want to take off the magnet to see if the bead drops, if I did catch it. No. Well, now, okay. This, uh, this ain't easy. I don't know. <laughs> Let me see, wait, maybe. maybe put the magnet elsewhere. Or was that just to hold this into place? Oh yeah, there's another magnet here that's repelling this one. So it's probably just to hold that into place here. Maybe this needs to be like this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so here's my here's my thinking, right? There are bearings in here, several actually, some heavier than others. You can, I guess is because this side tilts up and because the magnet is attracted here, I feel like I need to 
capture one of those little bearings with this magnet, lift it so that it doesn't fall into one of the traps, into one of the booby traps, and probably swing it around into a different place and then drop it in. Uh, I don't know what that'll do. I think like logically thinking it makes sense. But then again, I might already be inside a booby trap because I've just been fiddling around with this. So I have no idea. And I think doing so this way, because obviously gravity um, might be the best thing to do. So let me try this out. I gotta find the bearing. Maybe the other solution is to leave it on here and do it from there. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing this click of this ball dropping somewhere. This, this is really complicated. Right around here, watch. There, you hear that click? That's a big click. I don't know what that means, but it means something. Maybe we can use this. Oh, it does it when I'm here, but it doesn't click when I'm here. That's something. I don't know what, I don't know what that is. Must admit, I am just uh, honestly, just randomly trying to find some pattern. I mean, I think that's the whole point right now is just to like, until something starts making sense, we gotta randomly just try things because we're going in blindly here. So there seems to be another magnet right here because watch, watch the end of the string. gets repelled. I'm hearing that ball drop now. It's like I lifted it up and then it, and it falls back down. I don't know what's happening. I really want to know if this magnet has anything to do with the solution at this point. I know it may be used for a tool maybe later. Wait, which way do you dial? You dial like this? I need to uh, I need to take a little break from this. I've been on this for probably about two hours now, uh, fiddling around with it. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and uh, come back to it. So I took a break from this puzzle, sat in the couch with it, took it with me everywhere in the house and tried to solve it. I can't get anywhere. I literally can't get anywhere. It, I'm going into this blindly. It is a sequential puzzle from what I know. It's not a maze. So there are certain things you have to do in a certain sequence in order to unlock it. Doing that blindly seems a bit difficult. So. I went online and I scoured a few blogs to see if I can find a hint or a clue. Um, most of the most of the times puzzles of this nature that are so expensive and rare, you won't find a solution online, period. There just aren't solutions online. That being said, something really interesting in the blog post that I've read is that no one's actually solved the first part of this puzzle. Most of the people um, would refer to either other puzzlers or to Brian and Sue themselves, the creators of this puzzle. They got the solution to the first part of this puzzle uh, they all realized that there is no way, no way that they could have done this themselves. It blows my mind that these people, these geniuses who solve puzzles all the time, self-admittedly say that they went for the solution to the first part because there was no way they would find it. Once they saw the solution, they agreed, yeah, no, they would have never found it. So that being said, I wrote an email to Brian and Sue asking them, requesting them for a solution to this. They sent me back like a eight page PDF file. All of them also saying that knowing the solution doesn't lessen the effect the puzzle has on you because of the craftsmanship and because of how clever and how concealed everything is. Uh, they're still widely impressed with, uh, with this puzzle. I'm going to solve the first step of the puzzle using that uh, PDF solution. I know what you're thinking guys. You're thinking, oh, this is a cop out, Ramsey. Uh, you know, you're you're just lazy, but honestly, no one I found online has solved this puzzle and they've all had to go back to the solution page. This is the solution to the first part. All right, there's a diagram showing the inner working of this very box right here. I'm gonna show you the diagram. It's not going to help you solve it. It's ridiculous. There are three booby traps within this thing. Not only magnets everywhere, but the polarity of the magnets are intricately placed. Um, have a look at this just like an x-ray of this right here, side by side. Okay, here we go. So it says remove the handset. This is the handset. Hopefully we didn't fall into one of those booby traps and if we did, hopefully we can get out of it. I uh, remove the handset and the brass plug at the end of the rope just pulls out. Lay the SMS box flat on its back and rotate the dial until the zero is at about one o'clock. 
got you. Rotate the dial until zero one o'clock. You'll feel it's attracted to the particular position. Pushing down on the receiver button, this releases pressure off the longer 20 millimeter magnet. Rotate the dial clockwise to two o'clock. Then slowly bring it back to the one o'clock. The receiver button will release and come up about eight millimeters. You can now pull the receiver button out of the puzzle. Nope. <laughs> Try that again. Lay it flat on its back. Okay, rotate the dial until zero is at one o'clock. While pushing down on the receiver button, rotate the dial clockwise to two o'clock. Then slowly bring it back to the one o'clock position. No, nope. down, one o'clock. Maybe I have to push this receiver in. Oh, oh, <gasps> aha! Got you, little peg. All right, it says to do this. <clears throat> Place a right hand receiver button. Whoa. What? Right hand receiver button on the dial near the number one. On the number one or near the number one? If it stays there while the puzzle is still upside down, you know you've picked up the ball bearing. If it falls away, you need to try again from the start. All right, we're there. Carefully return the SMS box back to flat on the table with the dial facing up. Okay, carefully, okay. Tilt the dial by pushing down on numbers five and six and rotate anti-clockwise just a few millimeters. You should stop at an obstacle. We'll call it the lock tube for the drawer, okay? So press down on five and six and rotate anti-clockwise just a few millimeters. Okay, I'm kind of stressed right now. It's like diffusing a bomb is what it feels like. Gently allow the dial to return to flat. Rotate it anti-clockwise again for another five millimeters. Then tilt the dial back down again. The pin under numbers five and six should now be in the lock tube. Rotate the dial back and forth in the lock tube. All right, I think I don't know where we are anymore. Uh, this is actually, even with the instructions, not even gonna lie, this is super difficult and I would never be able to figure this out by myself. Five and six at two o'clock, done. Press down at five and six until the gap between five and six stop at nine o'clock, done. Let the dial go flat and roll the SMS anti-clockwise until it's almost upside down and rotate anti-clockwise just a few millimeters. Okay, yep, just stop an obstacle. We'll call it the lock tube drawer. Gently allow the dial to return flat. Rotate anti-clockwise for another five millimeters. The pin under number five and six should now be in the lock tube. What the f we wanna rotate till it's almost upside down and we wanna bring... I'm not sure if I got it. I think I got, I have no idea. Gently allow the dial to return flat. Rotate anti-clockwise till it's done. Under five and six should now be in the lock tube. Okay. Okay, and use the brass plug from the handset to mark the dead center of the tube. Let the dial come back to flat. Rotate the dial anti-clockwise again until the receiver button is directly in line with the brass pin over the lock tube. So right about there. All right, so I think the ball bearing has now fallen into there. So I've had it travel into here now. Okay, rotate the which way? Anyway, back. So numbers five and six are above the lock tube again. Tilt the box towards you where the bottom of the puzzle is up. The bottom of the puzzle is here. So I'm in a booby trap. The booby trap says that if you hear this sound, that means I'm in a booby trap. So what now? Okay, so tip the SMS upside down above my head. Don't tilt the dial, keep the dial flat. Rotate the dial while the box is upside down until you hear a click and the ball bearing has fallen out of either trap. Oh, I think I heard it. Rotate the dial until number one is at 12 o'clock, then turn the SMS back over so the dial is facing up again. Now the ball bearing should be in the correct section of the circular track behind the dial. You can prove that by doing the double check at A. I sort of feel like they just did that to make me look silly, but whatever. <laughs> All right, I'm out of the booby trap. Let's do it again. Roll it until it's almost upside down. Add the pin. There's the middle. Bring this here. That should be in there now. That should be in the little hole. 
Once it's in the hole, rotate the dial so that numbers five and six are above the lock tube again. At this point, just pushing this should release something, but it's not. Oh, oh, here we go. This is now open. Okay, oh my God, we've made progress. There's a drawer here. Okay, all right. We're just gonna, we're just gonna follow instructions here because this is way too complicated. The first thing you need to do on the following step four is to close the drawer again and let it lock. What? So I have to close this drawer? All right, drawer closed. Turn the puzzle over so that the dial is down and the receiver button is facing you. Done, okay? This is this is like literally diffusing a bomb. Swirl the puzzle around in a clockwise motion. It can take anywhere from 25 to 30 swirls. When in doubt, just spin it. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> what the? Look at that mechanism on the inside. There's a mechanism on the inside. Pretty cool. Now we are left with this. What is going on here? Use uh, the brass cord in the small rectangular hole in the corner, in the small rectangular hole. Use the brass plug on the end of the handset cord. A magnet will pick up the SIM card and rotate it until the tapered edge points towards the large rectangular slot. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my God, there's something in there that I need to get out. That's what the other rattling sound was. Oh, I found the SIM card. Okay, I now rotate the drawer. This is crazy. I rotate the drawer perpendicular and pull the plug out. Now you finally get to use that really strong magnet that holds the handset on top of the telephone. Place it on top of the open drawer and tilt them both on a 45 degree angle. I'm not sure I understand. Look at that. This little guy popped up. As you set the drawer straight again, tip the drawer on its side and drop the SIM card into the slot. Okay, SIM card. This is absolutely insane. So the SIM card here needs to go in the slot while I'm holding the brass pin. Okay, so I'm here. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. So that's there. SIM card is now in. Perfect. What is there left to do? Hold the tele, what? Now turn the phone with the dial up and swirl clockwise until the elliptical disc is on the bottom again. Can I just do it with my hand? Just do it with my hand at this point. All right, it's at the bottom. Final step to complete the puzzle. Whew, this is incredible. This is actually a lot of fun to do with the instructions. Okay, so I need to put the drawer in back in the box upside down. So that pin is going to unlock something. Did you hear that? What? <gasps> what kind of magic is this? Oh, the SIM card is supposed to be in here, by the way. It's not. It's all right, I forgive you. Probably because I put the SIM card in backwards. Okay, I don't know how the SIM card is supposed to be in here. Pretty amazing. God, that's cool. And it says here, congratulations. Uh, once you put the SIM card in, you have reached halfway. Now all you have to do is to put the puzzle back the way you found it. So there we go. That is insane. This is mind blowing. I'm, my mind is actually blown right now. Oh, this is a mobile phone. Oh, I see. That's the SIM card. That's cool. See, that's a SIM card and this is a little cell phone. A little secret compartment. I think I'm out of the booby trap. Yes, I can now place this back in, click it in, place this here, hang up the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, the SMS uh, box puzzle. This is incredible. This is absolutely insane. I almost went insane. Hope you enjoyed. Well, all right. So let me end this video by saying, first of all, yes, I did use the solution to solve this puzzle. Um, it was one of those rare cases where I, I would not even 
fathom how to solve this puzzle without the solution. And that being said, using the solution, it was still difficult for me to solve this puzzle, which gives you a bit of a hint on how hard this puzzle actually was. But that being said, something really interesting is that even though I had the solution, it wasn't any less impressive because I wasn't randomly doing things. I had to follow certain steps and every step along the way led me to realize how much thought went into creating this puzzle, which is incredible. Brian Young, great job. I would leave the link below, but I do believe they're sold out. I'll leave the link to uh, Puzzle Master Australia. They have a whole bunch of other puzzles you guys can check out on their website. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, great service as well, uh, super kind. So let me know what you guys thought of this puzzle. Let me know what you guys think of uh, someone actually using the solution in this case to solve it. Uh, keeping in mind that most everybody who solved this puzzle needed the solution to solve it, at least one part of it, which is insane to me. Um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace, bro.